this is where we've been staying for the last couple of nights, right on the shores of Lake Prespa. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't film ourselves arriving the other night because our camera died. And yesterday was just pretty terrible weather. It was actually snowing all day. You wouldn't believe it now to look at the weather. But um, this spot is pretty remote. It took us like half an hour to drive eight kilometres along, along the uh, bumpy track to get here. And there's just one little village over there. But I don't think anyone really lives in it. But the amazing thing about this spot is that behind me here is North Macedonia. Just over here is Albania. And just over here is Greece. So we're literally parked on the corner of three countries. It's awesome. So we've got a busy day ahead of us today. Uh, first of all, we're going to go and check out an abandoned hotel, which we've been recommended on the shores of this lake. Then we're going to be heading into Bitola to meet someone who we've been chatting to for a bit on Instagram. And then we're both going to head over to the Vevchani Carnival, which is a couple of hours from here. As far as we understand it, this carnival marks the start of the Orthodox New Year, according to the old Julian calendar. And it's like a 1400 year old celebration. It's really ancient. It's a kind of mix of old pagan beliefs and the new orthodox ways and as far as we understand it it's people dressing up in all these like crazy masks and there's a huge bonfire and the party goes on for two days. Not sure how much filming we're going to get done there because it's going to be dark but it's going to be exciting I think. On our way to Bitola, we stopped off to explore an abandoned hotel we'd been recommended to visit. As I can see, nothing else has changed. Found anything interesting? Yeah, it's so vandalised, isn't it? What a shame. Kind of makes you wonder, with a view like that, how on earth somewhere like this ends up abandoned. It's truly amazing. I don't really know how interesting this video is going to be because there's not much left of this place at all. The whole fun that we have with these urbexes is a bit of the history, you know, but there's no history here. <laughs> Just lots of smashed up staircases and empty rooms. That looks like a bit of roof there that someone's broken into. Why? Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a big drop into nothing. Oh, wasn't expecting that. Oh my word. Where's the lift? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't really know much about this place other than we've been told it was a former Yugoslavian hotel and uh, the kitchen caught fire, not exactly sure when, but they, uh, they couldn't afford to renovate it basically to repair it and with Lake Orid being the far more successful, more touristy lake just, um, just across the mountains, they just thought there's no point. So this Lake Prespa is just, everything here is abandoned, there's not really any tourism industry because it's all been stolen by Orid. This once bustling hotel would have employed many people from the local area and been host to hundreds of holidaymakers looking for a grand view over the incredibly tranquil Lake Prespa. Nowadays, it sadly lays in ruin, slowly crumbling away as the harsh Eastern European elements lay waste to it. This is the most fully furnished room we've found so far. Looks like some kind of old reception room or something. Not much left of it though. I think down here is where the fire was because it smells a bit burnt. Hmm, you definitely see some fire damage. Devastating. Yeah. Black in air. If this was the restaurant area, the dining room, with a cracking view, 
This was a tiny little kitchen for them to work in and no ventilation whatsoever. Nothing. It's just wall to wall kitchen, so. Terrible place to put a kitchen. Disaster waiting to happen, wouldn't it really? The basement. Ooh, let's have a look. A bowling alley? Yeah. Basement bowling alley. <laughs> Which way? So Lucy has just stumbled upon a bowling alley. <laughs> Check this out. Sam, cool. Nice. So there's an old calendar here on the floor, which seems to be this hotel. And surprisingly, this calendar's from 2004. So it's not even been abandoned that long. What a mess. Huh. Looks like some kind of crack den in here now. People have definitely been rough sleeping in here. Mm, so there's Arabic written on the wall. So that says Aleppo is not dead. Stop killing Rohingya. It looks like some migrants have passed through here and been sleeping here for a while. No sign of anyone now. This is kind of cool. No idea what it is, but it's probably the best bit of furniture that we found in here. <laughs> Not sure. If anyone knows what it is, please let us know. Okay, so this has just got a whole lot darker and weirder. I don't know if you can see that. It says, documented deaths of refugees and migrants due to the restrictive policies of Fortress Europe. Here's a list of all the refugees that have been found dead. Quite a big list. And there's tons of these posters all around the room. If this place is really what it looks like, which is, you know, a base for refugees as they're smuggling themselves across the border, then it's Terribly, terribly sad. You just look at these mattresses and the filth and everything in here. And I think that people might be sleeping in here. But it makes total sense because we're right across the border from Greece and there's no borders on the lake. So they would be getting boats across the lake, spending the night here and then carrying on. It's unimaginable until you actually see this. And then there's these lists of names here. Just countless lists, hundreds, maybe thousands of people put up by a charity and it says here like man 20s Algeria found dead on beach probably while trying to enter by sea 12 died when migrant boat from Morocco capsized frozen to death near Erdin after Greek border guards forced him to walk back to Turkey and it just goes on and on and on and on drownings and people freezing people starving people being hit by trucks it's I can't even get my head around it. They say we're running out of time. Looks to me like it goes on forever. It's all mixed up with space and light and stuff. Oh, they tell me it's really hard to measure. We left the crumbling ruins of the hotel behind us and headed into Bitola to meet up with a local we'd encountered through couch surfing, who'd invited us to spend the evening with him and his family celebrating Orthodox New Year's Eve.
So tonight is New Year's Eve again in the uh, Julian calendar. It's basically just an excuse to have a fire, get pissed up, drink some raki, make some uh, explosions and yeah, have a good night. It's brilliant, it's like bonfire night in England, just much more Balkan and Slavic. It's crazy and fun and we're having a good time. La Slavia. I'm <laughs> 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 celebration tonight so it's such a nice time we've drunk a lot of raki I've tried a new type of raki where you actually boil it with sugar it tastes boy, so good so now we're just watching people chuck around burning embers and uh, let off small explosives and yeah it's really fun every couple of houses or so has got a little fire going outside and it's a really nice atmosphere here tonight so I don't think we're gonna make it to the town where the famous celebrations go on because we're having such a nice time here in why leave We've just left those guys now. It's about, what time is it, 10 o'clock? Yeah. We've got about two hours on the road now heading north because <coughs> whilst the carnival was on today in this town, we've also been reliably told that it's gonna to be on tomorrow morning first thing. And it's Lucy's birthday tomorrow, so we really wanna go and check it out. We think it'll be really cool to see. We also wanna show you guys the carnival, so we're hoping, fingers crossed, that that is gonna be on tomorrow. So we're doing the drive now, so we don't have to get up super early in the morning. I've got a feeling I'm gonna be a little bit hungover. Talking about being hungover, I have had a little bit of raki tonight. And before we left, those guys packed up a load of really tasty food for us. They made so much food for us, but I'm really bad with remembering the names. So I'll get Lucy to tell you in detail what it's all called later. But right now I've got this beautiful pastry stuff with some cheese, and I've got this garlic stuff here, and it's so fucking good. So I'm just gonna wolf this down now. So yeah, let me get on with that, please. <laughs> Well, this would probably be one of the prettiest rivers we've ever stayed by if it weren't for one thing. Look at all this rubbish. Just all the way down the banks on all sides. It's just horrendous. Such a shame because other than that, it's beautiful here. But anyway, we're going to head into Vevchani, see if there's anything left of the carnival. We slept in a bit late today because um, we had such a late drive last night and we were both knackered. But hopefully there's still something going on in the town, we'll have to see. We've just arrived in Vevchani, doesn't seem to be much going on this morning. We definitely made sure online that the uh, carnival takes place on the 14th today, Lucy's birthday. But there's no sign of anything. And there were photos from yesterday and there was definitely a carnival yesterday, so 
Maybe they changed the dates at the last minute, I don't know. It's just like a ghost town at the minute. I think everyone's probably quite hungover. So it's like getting to the party on New Year's Day. Yeah, we arrived <laughs> <So> late. <laughs> so, sorry uh, guys. Sorry. <laughs> let's get a coffee. Yeah, let's go get a coffee and warm up. <laughs> So as Ben mentioned last night, he wanted me to talk through all of these delicious foods we got given last night. In here I've got a box of pastries stuffed with cheese. They look a little bit like croissants. They are super delicious. In here, I think this is called Majnik, but if I got that wrong, I'm terribly sorry. It's quite similar to Burek, just lovely layers of pastry. It's all greasy and hot and just delicious. <laughs> And um, here we've got a jar of Ivar, famous all over the Balkans. It's basically just like roasted red peppers, sometimes aubergine and things like that, made into a paste. It's sweet, it's smoky, it's addictive. <laughs> In this uh, beer bottle, <laughs> we've actually got um, like a tomato sauce. It's sort of made from like chopped up tomatoes, garlic again, olive oil, and you're supposed to just dip pieces of like crusty bread in it and it's really good. Here we've got some lovely crumbly cheese as well. This goes amazingly with the Ivar. It's very similar to feta, but not quite as strong. And finally, we've got this uh, garlicky stuff that's quite similar to aioli. Ben cannot get enough of this. It's super garlicky. So I think now we're just gonna tuck into all of this for our lunch. <laughs> I've got to say this homemade Ivar is just so much better than the shop bought stuff. It's incredible. I think I've tried cooking it before, but that was before I'd even tried it and this is infinitely better. The trick is to cook it low and slow, I think, and it's fire roasted vegetables, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's got this real smoky flavor to it. It's sweet and it's just incredible. Lucy can't say I never treat her. We're eating last night's leftovers in a lay-by at the side of a road on her birthday. Out of takeaway boxes. <laughs> That's the best way I could have imagined it.